officially grants full approval of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine, the first vaccine to move from emergency authorization to full approval. So joining me to break this down is the CEO of Pfizer, Albert Berla. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Kira. Well, let's begin with the fact that this is clearly a big step for science. But even in this big moment, Albert, there are still a lot of people in this country who are mistrustful of the vaccines for many different reasons. So why should people trust this approval? There are several people, but still they are not convinced and they have fears uh, that uh, and this is an emotional reaction have fears and you cannot just uh, explain it with uh, with data and science but some of them are were claiming that uh, because the vaccine didn't have a full approval that uh, was the main reason for their reluctance so finally uh, we have that and uh, that uh, should be a good reason for them now to go and get vaccines and as they are going to get their vaccines i'm sure the other people will also see them and uh, will get more comfortable a bit of a domino effect. So, especially as a parent, I want to know how soon will we see approval of the vaccine for kids under 12? We are working very intensively on that right now, and this is a very, very large study. So, uh, for kids between 5 and 11, I expect that our studies will be completed in September, by the end of the month. And then we will submit to the FDA, and then uh, it's up to FDA to do the review and approve it. That soon, so you're sticking to September. Yes, we are sticking to September and we know how important it is. You know, it's not only the US, but um, we, we are receiving calls from so many governments around the world that uh, they are urging us to accelerate the studies for kids because they know that uh, the school season is coming and that could become uh, quite a big issue with the kids being uh, unprotected. So we do everything we can to accelerate this uh, timeline. So now that this vaccine has been fully approved, doctors are able to prescribe it off-label, as you know. The head of the FDA has actually said they wouldn't recommend that for kids under 12 because the normal dosage may not be appropriate. So what are your thoughts on that, both for kids under 12 and for booster shots? I think that uh, it is not for me to speak about off-label use. Actually, there are very strict uh, rules that uh, they are not allowing pharmaceutical companies to discuss publicly off-label usage. Uh, what I can say, it is that uh, the product is approved for kids 12 and above, and that we will submit data by the end of September. We haven't submitted them yet about kids between 5 and 11. Okay, well, as for booster shots then, what do you think? Will this be three and done, or will this be a yearly shot, like what we do with the flu shot? We don't know, I don't think anyone knows, uh, certainly. But um, what I had said in the past as well, um, way back months, was that based on the totality of the data, I predicted that we will need a booster dose at around eight months. And then after that, likely will be an annual revaccination for certain reasons that we can discuss uh, this i came to this conclusion i still believe this is a likely scenario i don't think that i don't say this is a certainty but this is a likely scenario all right well what about people who received the j and j vaccine should they be looking to pfizer for a booster shot now is it safe to mix and match these shots Again, this is not for me to speak about something like that. The regulators and CDC are the ones that should make recommendations. I know that there have been studies that, uh, that uh, really try to understand uh, this situation. They work, but this doesn't mean that uh, in the U.S. Uh, uh, we have uh, either approval or recommendation to do so. Okay, because we are following what is happening overseas, so we'll continue to follow if the decision is made here it's in the States. It's happening in many countries. It is true that in many countries, the authorities over there, the CDC equivalent, they have recommended the boosters on AstraZeneca or Genzy. Got it. For, now, with the mRNA vaccines like us. What about the reports of myocarditis? How are you going to continue to monitor? We are, 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 we are monitoring because it's a, 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 it's a,
that uh, all, 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 all the data. Very, very, that is what is happening uh, for millions million, million of people. So it's really uh, very rare. The Pfizer vaccine is more than 90% effective against infection from the original coronavirus. We've talked a lot about that, but recent studies found that the effectiveness starts to wane over time, possibly due to the Delta variant. So Albert, do you agree with concerns that if a new variant comes along, that the Pfizer vaccine could become ineffective? And if so, how are you planning for future variants? Thank you, Kira. It's a very good question, and we have uh, established, particularly through our partnership, uh, research partnership with uh, uh, Israel, Israeli Minister of Health, a very good surveillance system. In Israel, they have used uh, our vaccine, and they have 10 million people approximately, and they have electronic medical records, so they have a very accurate uh, medical history for every uh, citizen of Israel. And we did see that uh, there was uh, a reduction in the infections, not that much in hospitalization at that time. And we try to understand, because we worry, is it because our vaccine is not effective against Delta, that was at the same time the dominant variant, or is it that after six months, the vaccine starts to wane, the efficacy of the vaccine? And after analyzing the data, we came to the conclusion that it is the second. Uh, the, the cases that were appearing in Israel were cases of six months old, and it was a very different situation in cases of three months old. So uh, we continued this, uh, uh, let's say, analysis of the data, and right now we feel very, very confident that um, a booster shot of uh, the same vaccine will be very, very effective, actually more effective than a booster, the second dose of the vaccine against the Delta variant. And uh, that we are monitoring not only with the study data that we have, but also we are doing real world, real world efficacy uh, study, uh, observations in Israel. I need to tell you that we are developing a Delta specific vaccine. We are developing a Delta specific vaccine because this is something very important. I cannot take a chance with global health and just based on my certainty, not have something ready in case we need it. I am almost certain that we will not need it. But as I said, I, I couldn't take the chance. If we don't need it, which is what I am predicting, we will put it on the shelves and we will continue with boosters of the same vaccine. If in any case I'm wrong, we will have a vaccine against Delta, which is specific. And if, in, if we do need the Delta specific vaccine, how soon would that become available? Very soon, because we are working, as I said, like if we need it. I know that we don't, but we are doing all the studies, all the manufacturing work, so we will be able to have it. Our policy is that every time that a variant appears, our scientists are getting their hands around it, and they characterize it as a variant of concern or not. Variant of concern means something that may escape the immune protection of our vaccine. For those, we are having a plan that within 100 days, actually 95 days, we will be able to have a new vaccine made. So this is where the, the, eff the efficiency that we have achieved right now. We started already the work done. So I think uh, we will have it uh, by the end of October, November, if it's needed. But I don't think it will be needed, I repeat again. Okay. From your mouth to God's ears. Pfizer CEO Albert Burla, appreciate your time today. Thank you, Kira. Thank you very much. I can't even. One day, maybe, but not right now. Please let this be the time we've been trying for so long. No matter what result you're hoping for, when you need to be sure, choose Clear Blue Digital, a unique combination of AirGuard features and over 99% accurate. Clear Blue, for results you can trust. Finally tonight here, rock and roll pioneers, the Everly Brothers, and tonight, remembering Don Everly. Wake up, Lee, Susie, wake up. He was the older Everly brother, Don Everly, topping the charts with his brother Phil, the Everly Brothers, the most successful rock and roll act out of Nashville in the 1950s. From Brownie, Kentucky, their parents performed country music, and Don and Phil Everly were just 18 and 20 with their hit Bye Bye Love. 
1957. Bye, bye, love. Bye, bye, Don Everly, the deeper voice, usually the lead singer, once saying he and his brother could almost read each other's minds when they were singing. Dream, 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 dream. Among the first inductees to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, influencing the Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel, the Eagles. I want you to tell me why you walked out on me. Don passed away seven years after his brother Phil. His family saying Don lived by what he felt in his heart, sharing the music that made him an Everly brother. We love their music. It certainly lives on. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. New customers get our best deals on all smartphones. That's right. But what if I'm already a customer? Oh, no problem. Hey, Cam. Yeah. Ah. Same deal. Yeah. It's kind of our thing. Oh, it's a great deal. What if I'm new to AT&T? Cam, can... Oh, yeah. nice. Hey. But what about for existing same customers? Same deal. Same deal. <laughs> Is he okay? It's not complicated. With AT&T, everyone can ace back to school with our best deals on every smartphone, like the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 5G. To the index and actress and neuroscientist Maya Bialik will step in now as host of Jeopardy. For now, already the new host of Jeopardy's primetime special, she'll now do the regular show too until a permanent replacement is named after the sudden departure of Mike Richards, who stepped down after offensive comments in his past. You'd never want leftover onion residue or any food residue on any of your surfaces. But that's what you could be doing if you're cleaning with a used dishcloth, even after you've rinsed it. So switch to a fresh sheet of Bounty for a more hygienic clean. Unlike used dishcloths that can carry and redistribute residue, Bounty keeps your surfaces cleaner because better hygiene begins with Bounty. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. And that tragic news out of Houston, a father shot and killed while driving with his two young boys, the brothers six and eight, taking control of their dad's SUV, guiding it off the freeway, then seeking help from a woman outside a restaurant. Police tonight now offering a $10,000 reward. And tonight's winning numbers are 18, 18. 55, 39, 71, 10, 43. 43? Those numbers again. We won! Yes! The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. I'll hold on to that. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. And outgoing New York Governor Andrew Cuomo dealing with the storm in his final weekend in office. The governor now with just hours left. Cuomo today in a farewell message saying it was an honor to serve, but also blasting the state attorney general's report into sexual harassment claims against him, saying it was, quote, designed to be a political firecracker on an explosive topic, and it worked. Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul becoming the first woman governor in New York at midnight tonight. We did it again. Verizon has been named America's most reliable network by Root Metrics, and our customers rated us number one for network quality in America, according to J.D. Power, proving there's only one best network. Tonight, the Reverend Jesse Jackson and his wife Jacqueline said to be responding to treatment, both hospitalized after testing positive for COVID. Jesse Jackson was fully vaccinated, receiving his first shot at a public event in January. His wife was not vaccinated. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Tropical Storm Henri continuing to batter the Northeast today with heavy rain and flooding. That system spawning a confirmed tornado as well in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Flood watch is still in effect across much of New England. Henri, the first tropical storm to hit the region in nearly 15 years. The storm also knocking out power to at least 140,000 customers. You know how some carriers give you so little for your older busted phone you just end up living with it? I don't think so. Verizon lets you trade in your broken phone for a shiny new one. You break it, we upgrade it. You dunk it, crash it, yucks, doggy bone it. 
<laughs> Slam it, wham it, strawberry jam it. We upgrade it. Every customer, current, new, or business. Up to $800 for the 5G phone you want. Because everyone deserves better. Mm. Put my phone in the washer and the dryer. To the horrific and deadly weather here at home, the flooding tragedy in Tennessee. At least 21 people now killed, including seven-month-old twins.